welcome back to the Weekly News Roundup. Today, we are going to cover the Home Tech Editions, and we're going to do Sillyville. So, stick around to the end of the show for that. All right, we're going to start in, actually, we have a little bit of security, too. We have a couple security articles, then Smart Home, then... Sillyville. We're going to start out with the Joker malware that signs you up for pricey services, floods the Android markets. All right, so uh, this guy here is an app that it was a uh, piece of malware. We've seen it before. It was kind of kicked out and it's making its way back around in. There were 17, oh, 11. There were 11 different apps on the Google Play Store that uh, that had this. Uh, no, actually, this was this was last week. So last July, there were 11 of them had it with 500,000 downloads. A new batch with 120,000 downloads had 17 apps. So 17 more apps were just found this week. So the Joker application is you. It gets installed on your device, and then as it gets installed on your device then it's going to go in, it's going to download and install more applications. It's going to sign you up for a whole lot of subscription services with the payment systems you have stored on your phone, which is why you should never do that. Then it's going to co-opt your text messaging and start doing some text messagey stuff. And a few other odds and ends things as well. So you can see what it's doing. Now, this is actually a new version. It used to actually have the Joker Trojan directly in the app. Now it doesn't. But when you open the app, it does what you think it's legitimately supposed to do. But while it does so, it downloads the malicious code and executes it in the background. So that's kind of how it works. And there was a list of these apps. Where is it at? Uh, I think it might be this link. One of these links had a list of the actual apps. Here you go. These are the names of the actual apps. I will read these off for you people that might be listening. So if you have any of these, uh, pay closer attention to the article. Make sure you don't have these. All good PDF scanner, mint leaf manager, private message, unique keyboard, fancy fonts, and free emoticons. Tangram app lock, direct messenger, private SMS, one sentence translator, multifunctional translator, stylo photo changer, metaculous scanner, desire translate, talent photo editor, blur focus, Care message, part message, paper doc scanner, blue scanner, hummingbird PDF converter, photo to PDF, all good PDF scanner. So any of those guys, delete them off your phone and make sure you are not running malware. The healthcare giant UHS was hit by ransomware, sources say. At least this one here in the United States, they were actually still able to function with paper and pen for a while, which is at least a testament. At least the hospitals around here don't have to turn people away because the computer systems are down. But it is certainly problematic. I know my mom's hospitals got hit by malware several times, actually. Um, they've had, they've had a lot of these types of issues shutting down their systems, which is kind of sad because they really don't have a way to pass meds if the computer systems are on the fritz. Kind of crazy. Now, most of them don't even know how to use the computer systems well, which is frightening. Um, b based on my mother's ability to use a computer, I would not want to be on my mother's wing. We'll put it that way. Okay. <laughs> I mean, literally like last time I was over there trying to help her with computer work. How do I delete email again? take a computer science course. <laughs> All right. But anyway, anyway, um, next one we have with all of this up in ransomware, the Department of Treasury issued an alert and the Department of Treasury is basically saying it is now becoming against the law for anybody or an agent operating on somebody's behalf to actually pay for uh, ransomware. So if you're paying a ransom to get your data back, the uh, Department of Treasury and the FBI is really looking disfavorably about this because every time the ransoms get paid, these people are incentivized to go back and do it again. And this is kind of a problematic thing. So Toyota's ceiling mounted robot is like GLaDOS for your kitchen. This thing is a little bit terrifying to me. Um, I was kind of having visions of, um, I don't know what, I was having visions of something. I can remember what it was last night when I was compiling these. I'm kind of forgetting it now, but um, basically instead of a robot on the floor, which is kind of going around and bouncing it around, all right, um, 
going around and bouncing it around, then it instead mounts itself to the ceiling. Oh, you know what is Flight of the Navigator. This looks like the, the little mats from Flight of the Navigator, right? Kind of shoots along with all of these streams all around your kitchen. Uh, shoots around these streams all around the kitchen, and um, it's going to go ahead and do all the various things. So this particular one is a kitchen cleaning robot. So it's going to go through and you tell it to and drop on down from the ceiling and just start cleaning everything up. So it kind of operates on this motor down here and kind of see what it's doing. It's kind of this creepy looking spy device. Here's kind of on the floor version. So this is the original normal upright one. The problem they were having is rounding corners. You had tight spaces, a lot of things like that. So like, hey, let's ceiling mount the thing. And then it can just travel all over the place. And when it's not being used, it just kind of folds up and goes up in the ceiling. So definitely a, an interesting thing there. All right, uh, there is more ring stuff and I completely forgot to bring Alexa over. So anyway, we just have to go up to do it in Alexa's honor. Hey Alexa, order unicorn meat, confirm. So ring mailbox sensor, Amazon will alert you if someone steals your mail. Yes, this is the word we're in. So you can put the little ring powered by ring or protected by ring on your mailbox. So somebody uh, doesn't do this. If this becomes prevalent enough, I'll just be able to buy these little stickers and put them on my mailbox. People won't realize it. But basically, it's a little sensor that goes into your mailbox and it, um, it will actually uh, notify you every single time your mailbox is open or closed. So anybody comes by and opens and closes your mailbox, it's going to notify you. I like to find one of these just... <laughs> So this actually came out was uh, very silently announced without any real fanfare a few months ago because it's part of the sidewalk project. So what more do you want but a wireless bridge mesh network device on mailboxes because it's way more convenient to gain signal for your whole neighborhood. If like two or three people have these on their mailboxes, it crisscrosses most of the neighborhood versus only on your smart speakers or inside devices. It has a harder time reaching the rest of the network. So this is an integral part of sidewalk. And again, that's why they want to use it. So kind of frightening, but um, see what that happens to be. All right, um, the Apple Watch heart monitor is sending too many people to the doctor. So the new Apple Watch has the heart monitor and uh, this is actually not the brand new one coming out. This is actually a study that was done over a period of time. I, I looked, flipped through the study and I thought, found the article was a little bit more interesting. So the Apple Watch can you know, measure your heart rates and things like this. And it's going to, it might give you warnings or notices. They'd be like, hey, your heart rate's kind of high. Well, there was actually a study done and it turns out that a lot of these watches were sending people to the doctor based on data that wasn't actually real. And I know that like my forerunner uh, here will actually measure heart rate stuff. And I find at times it's like, okay, that's not an accurate number. Sometimes like, sure, I'll, I'll agree with that number. But for the most part, it's not generally a super accurate number. Well, people were wearing these and getting all concerned that the watch is saying your heart rate's high and they were running out to the doctor and the doctor's like, dude, you're fine, go home. <laughs> right? So this is one of the dangers of having all of these smart link devices and, and things like this. We just don't need this type of stuff that's um, that's out and about. All right, on to our final story in this section. Ring has a new car cam. The idea here is that it has a traffic stop mode. It's always listening. And if you get pulled over, you just say, um, you know, hey, Alexa, order unicorn meat, confirm. Oh, by the way, I'm getting pulled over by the fuzz. And so you basically activate it by saying traffic stop and the camera will start recording and it measures a whole lot of data. So it's gonna measure your GPS locations, it's gonna start recording audio, it's gonna start recording video, and it will actually notify anybody that you have programmed into it to notify them that you're being stopped. The idea here is, of course, is that, of course, we all know that, that police are just these racist bigots that are just out to kill everybody that they stop, and so it's the evidence that the police officer is the one that killed you. Which makes zero sense, people. Here's a thought. If you don't want to get shot by the police, comply with what they say to do. Just a thought, okay? For crying out loud. Stop pretending like there's all these innocent people being run down by the police. When you're running around with a gun, expect to get shot. <laughs> I 
for the love, okay? But anyway, it can actually activate data in case they do come out and be like, you know, blah, you did bad stuff. You actually have, have a record of what went on as well. So for that, I think it's a fine thing. But the whole idea that we're creating this because police are just out to kill everybody, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, stop believing a false narrative. All right, well, if you like this work and you like to help support what we are doing, I do have a science fiction novel. This would be a great way. You can get something to help support the channel all at the same time. Synaptergy is based on some other tech companies and some tech and privacy related things. Head on over to the website at synaptergy.com or tlm.li forward slash s. Over here, you can read chapter one if you're interested in reading through that, or you can actually listen to the first five minutes of the book in audiobook format. And the where to buy button will give you a list of the various places I know of to buy the book. And there's probably some other places out there as well. So check anywhere you like to buy books online. See if Synaptor G is available over there. If you do buy it on Amazon, go ahead and give us a good honest review. That always helps independent authors to get good reviews on Amazon. And uh, with that, we'll move on to the next section. And on to our silly news. First one, when coffee makers are demanding a ransom, you know IoT is screwed. Now, I'm not sure if there was a better article for this because this title just captured me instantly. Guys, this is so true. When we're like, I need an Internet of Things coffee pot, I'm sorry. We need to get a checkup from the neck up. Like, I'm going to put my coffee pot on the Internet. Because I need my coffee pot to send me a text message when it's done brewing, I guess. I don't understand. Like, here's a thought, okay? It takes, I don't know, five, ten minutes, depending on your coffee pot, to brew, maybe. I don't know. I haven't used a percolating coffee pot in years. Um, you start it, you go do something, and you come back in five minutes. It's this difficult. But anyway, this guy, uh, this guy got a hold of an old uh, coffee pot that uh, was 2015, I think. So it's a little bit older of a version. It's an iKettle version three. Let's see, two years ago, they were version three, coffee maker version two, a researcher worked for pen test partners at the time. The updated products used a new chipset that fixed the problem. So some of these were fixed in later versions, but nevertheless, he did have a lot of fun with this coffee pot. Um, he was able to take the coffee pot and do things like pay ransom. Look at this little evil devil. Like, no, no, Joe, you ain't getting no brew. Um, how about no brew? You ain't getting no Joe. Oh, ow. Just go ahead and please don't, don't, don't down vote yet. Don't down vote yet. That was bad. I know. All right. Smarter is committed to ensuring smart kitchen range has its highest level of security and standards and all connected products are sold since 2017 are certified by the EUL standards. Yeah, a very limited number of first-generation units have been sold in 2016, although updates are no longer supported. For these models, we do a review of legacy claims on per-customer's basis in order to provide continued customer care. So he basically took the coffee pot. He made it do some, um, there you go, there's some crypto mining. He did some ransomware. He just basically did a whole lot of other fun stuff. No word on this if he actually put Doom on it, but uh, it does have a screen, so... Uh, or did he put Doom on it? I don't know. Let's see. Can I actually do a search for... Yeah, that's right. Ars Technica disables the search function, so I can't tell you if they did Doom or not over there without messing with things. But anyway, yeah, when uh, when the uh, coffee pot starts demanding money for brewing, the, brewing your Joe, you, you have too much stuff in your room. All right, so a teacher is booted off of virtual learning sessions, and the kids' reactions are priceless. Um... I don't know if we'll get a copyright on this, uh, playing this one, but we'll see. There's a little bit of music in the background, but let's go ahead and have a look. So the context is the teacher is teaching her digital class because, of course, we all need to, um, we all need to, to keep our children at home and put them in front of computers for eight hours a day while a teacher talks and talks and talks. Well, the teacher had bad Wi-Fi connections because, yeah, we still don't have all this good Internet system kicked off, and she was kicked out of the call. And so the kids are like, what's going on, man? You are the Miss Westmoreland leave the call. I think that's true. Miss Westmoreland actually left the call. <laughs> so actually, the school it's district random, records, um, the school district records the calls so the kids can see it later or whatever us. other purpose is. 
And so um, they actually sent this out to the parents to see what all their kids are doing. And the parents absolutely loved it. And they just like, oh yeah, go ahead and release that to the media. That's a fun, cute story. So very fun. They're like, what's going on? I don't get it. Let's log off the meeting. She was like half done with the book. I mean, <laughs> of course we're not done. I'm done, yo. <laughs> <laughs> all right that's enough of that uh but anyway yeah cute little story but yeah in this modern day of tech world the what do you do maybe we do need to have two adults on the room in case one of them does have connection issues right uh we were we ran into this problem when i ran a, a digital camp this summer that was interesting and halfway through in like day three my arch computer decided it's like I, I did something to it, and so it's kind of my, partially my fault, but it's like the whole thing stops working. I'm like, oh boy, I'm the one running technology. How do we do this? So I had to boot up another computer, get back on it with another Zoom account while I fixed the Arch computer, got the Arch computer fixed, and I came back because I was the one in charge of watching the waiting room to make root any kids where they needed to go. So kind of fun, but yeah, that's kind of what, what can happen on, on some of these guys. All right, next, a developer creates DOS subsystem for Linux because, you know, Linux subsystem for Windows is such a big deal. Now he's like, let's see if we can do the same thing with DOS. So now we have the ability to start up your computer with a DOS prompt and then run Linda, Linux on top of it. And so he was able to actually do some, um, he was able to actually do some stuff there. I mean, move that around, epilepsy warning there, I guess. Um, so... He was able to actually get your Linux system booting and still have access to DOS prompts. So in theory, you should be able to run some DOS-based applications, I guess. So he does actually have information here. This is from Fosbytes. So he gives you the information you need in order to run it and then just head on over to the GitHub page where you can grab all the other things running on MS-DOS 6.22 and free DOS. So there you go. Is this brilliant idea or is this fairly useless i mean there's not a lot to do although i will say an application i have for this i still do have a copy of SimCity 2000 for my old windows 95 computer laying around here so i mean i could use this and play some of these games and still run a linux system on top of it so that might be worth trying just for the fun of it i don't know let me know <laughs> all right we do have two more stories though it's rare i put the uh, title story at the bottom uh, but the next one, we have a totally useless Halo. Uh, this is B&O's, is it B-O remote? B -O remote, I think, Halo. It is a $900 ring to control your $40,000 speaker system. So if you were thinking that Apple had the take on the most price gouging crap ever, they've got nothing on this because this speaker system costs about as much as a small house. And then you can get this ring, which is nothing more than a remote control for $900. So it's a $900 remote control for this thing. So in all, this is all it is. It just sits here and it doesn't do anything. You just set it there next to your weird abstract art minimalist house, I guess. And then all it does, it doesn't have any smart function even. You just turn it on and it's a little touch screen to play and play next on your $40,000 speaker system. I would really like to meet the person who purchases this. I'm pretty sure the only other services they've ever purchased were investment and retirement plans from Bernie Madoff, okay? I cannot imagine a market for this type of stuff, but maybe... I'm wrong. You guys let me know. Our final story today for Sillyville. Apparently, there are aggressive raccoons that the White House is deploying to keep people off the lawn. Now, we know that Secret Service hides in the lawn at the White House. You don't want to leap the fence of the White House. You will not survive, okay? But some reporters got too close to the White House and they were apparently assaulted by some aggressive, rabid raccoons on the White House lawn. So yes, Trump is deploying raccoons. He is deploying raccoons to keep the White House safe. Beware. So what happened here, um, Michael Knowles is apparently talking. I think that's Michael Knowles, right? 
Um, so what happened is the, some reporters got too close to the White House for something, and these raccoons jumped out and just started kind of gnawing on their pant legs or something. And so basically they had to come in here and uh, they had to uh, capture the raccoons or whatever else. But uh, be careful near the White House. They are now deploying the animal research. It is raccoons. And they are going to kick butt. I mean, these raccoons, they're going to open your garbage. They're going to gnaw on your camera cables. They're going to keep you off the White House lawn. That is what they are doing. Well, if you'd like to help support the channel, you can have a look at my subscribe star page. This is new. So uh, we actually have a couple subscribers over here right now. And uh, you can jump on with the $1, $5, $10, or $25 support channel. We also still have Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Tom M. That's T-O-M-M and thinklifemedia.com. Those are all the various ways you can help support the channel. So if you are interested, you can go ahead and head on over there. So thanks for watching, everybody, and we will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.